We start our service tonight with our opening hymn. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and the God of all consolation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive bread and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of all mercies and the God of all consolation. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born as a Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Some men brought to Jesus a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus said, I tell you, his many sins have been forgiven, as he his great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little then jesus said to her your sins are forgiven jesus told his disciples this is what is written the messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name 
to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. In the way that we sincerely accept the heartfelt apologies of others. Let us live out the character of Christ in our forgiving ways. In the way that we reach out to those whom society has shunned for wrongdoing. Let us live out the character of Christ in our forgiving ways. In the way that we share with the world that everyone is forgiven for Jesus Christ, Jesus' sake. Let us live out the character of Christ in our forgiving ways. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our first lesson. As God chosen one, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect, perfect harmony. Please stand for the gospel. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The Holy Gospel is from St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife, children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him his debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience on me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to you, every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Here ends the gospel. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, <clears throat> Jesus the Christ. Tonight's theme is focused on forgiving and forgiveness. Forgive us our sins and forgive those who sin against us. 
is in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and is in the Lord's Prayer that we pray each week we gather. What does that mean for us? What is that saying? Forgiveness means to set free, to let go, to remove. And it's an example that I came across was they said, you have arrows and a bullseye target. And for perfect arrows in your life, whatever they may be, keep missing that bullseye. So those arrows are not perfectly shot. They're in the wilderness and straying, and they're not following God's way because they're not perfect and in the arrow, in the bullseye. But if you forgive, that means to take away, to remove. And that means all those arrows are removed from the target. Like your mistakes have been erased away. Or it's like a chalkboard where you write and you write your sins on that chalkboard. And then you ask for forgiveness and God gives it to you and your sins are washed away as you wash the chalkboard and your sins are no longer. That's what it means to forgive, to release you from the bondage that holds you captive or holds up a barrier between you and another person. And that barrier could be anger or resentment, envy, jealousy, any one of those can help you hold a grudge and hold on to the wrong and go, poor me, poor me, and you can't see anything else but that, and that's what your life is focused on. If you get down on your knees and repent and ask for forgiveness for whatever has been done to you or what you have done to others, our Lord and Savior gives that to us. Proof, the empty cross. We are forgiven for from our sins, and we forgive those who have sinned against us. So God has this big package of forgiveness. And we talk to God, and we come to him, and we bear our souls. <clears throat> and he knows what we're going to ask for even before we ask for it. And he gives us gift, the empty cross. Jesus died on that cross, and our sins are removed. They're forgiven. We are freed from the bondage of slavery from our sins. And now we're to take that and go out and forgive those people who we have hurt. And sometimes we have a tendency not to do that. And the list of reasons can be a long list of reasons. Maybe you have trouble with your eyesight and you don't see any fact or hear that you have done somebody wrong. You didn't see how you hurt so-and-so the other night when you spread a rumor. You didn't see how this person wanted to show you her new outfit and all you could do was put it down. You didn't see how hurt she was for your rude comment. And the list goes on and on. Because in our life, we have a tendency to hurt others. And sometimes we may not see that. It took me a long time to be aware of how my bad behavior and bad choices 
were affecting others in my area, my family and friends. And once I became aware of that, I was able to uh, make amends quicker than what I would have done back in the past, which might take me anywhere from a week to a month to a year to forgive people for me hurting them. Sometimes I don't take that gift of forgiveness from God because I'm thinking, if he only knew the true me, if he only knew the darkness inside of me, the brokenness that's there, God wouldn't forgive me this gift. So I don't deserve this gift. Right, I will agree. We don't deserve this gift. It's called grace, an undeserved gift by God. He sent his son down to die for us, to forgive our sins. He gives that to us freely. And all we need to do is acknowledge that and turn our hearts back to God. So he is the focus. So we're continuing our journey. And to be open to forgiveness is to be vulnerable, just like the slave in the gospel lesson today. The slave said, Lord, help me. I cannot pay your debt. Have mercy on me. He was vulnerable and uh, made himself known so much so that the Lord had pity on him and forgave him his huge debt. But then we learn he didn't have mercy on somebody else who owed him money. And he punished them. Sometimes God gets angry at us and we do have consequences to pay. All in all, we are forgiven of our sins. It just takes time. It takes learning. How are we hurting others? How did somebody hurt you guys? Has somebody hurt you and you've had a grudge for 10, 30, 40 years? Because if you hold on to those grudges and you do not forgive that person, that person is costing you time and energy from your own life and taking your focus off of God to focus on that grudge and that resentment that's building up over time. Forgiveness, a big word, it's meaning to let go of, to remove. What barriers today do you need to lay at the cross and have Christ die for? What things today do you need to ask God to help you forgive? I read a book by Corey Ten Boom called March for the Lord and Corey went around, she was a very uh, well-known speaker and book writer and author, and she talked about her time in the concentration camps. And there was this one officer who was the worst of the worst and would torture people in her concentration camp and in her, her uh, barracks that she was in. And one night she was giving a speech and then afterwards people were talking with her and there came to be the last man in line and he came and introduced himself as that com uh, commander. And he said, I would, I would like it if you could forgive me for what I did to you back at the concentration camp. 
The next lines are Corey saying, I had my hands in my pockets. And my will was not to take them out of my pocket and not to reach for that guy's hand. As I prayed to God to help me with this, my hand came out of my pocket and I was able to forgive him, not for my will, but for God's will. Sometimes we face situations like that. And by ourselves, we may not be able to forgive somebody. But with God's love and grace and forgiveness, we are able to do that. Amen. Continue with our offering prayer. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are worthy to be held in reverence by all the mortal race. We give you thanks for the innumerable blessings which, despite our unworthiness, you have showered upon us. We praise you especially that you have preserved for us in their purity your saving word and the sacred ordinances of your house. Grant and preserve to your church throughout the world purity of doctrine, faithful pastors who shall preach your word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and firmly believe your word of truth. Protect and defend your people in time of tribulation and danger that we in communion with your church and in unity with all Christian people, may fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive fullness of salvation. Upon all the nations of the earth, bestow your grace, especially we ask you to bless our land, all its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth justice and peace everywhere prevail. We commend to your care all our schools that virtue and useful knowledge may be nourished and the wholesome fruit of life may abound. In mercy, defend us from all calamities by fire, from water and pestilence, 
from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper all who labor and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Show yourselves to be the helper of the sick and the needy, the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Except we pray our bodies and our souls, our hearts and our minds, our talents and powers together with these gifts as our offering praise. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth, help us to prepare the world to come, doing the work which you have given us to do while it is day, before that night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting kingdom, where with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, God, forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, in, as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.